things. What's wrong? Trying to find the end? Yes. When do your new days start then? Then you get two weeks again, right? I believe so. Wish this would tell me. Hmm? Wish this would tell me. It doesn't. It says available time off 16 hours. No, it doesn't. Not really. So then you can ask Kevin? Yeah, I could ask him. <laughs> I like it. Okay. I think we're ready. All right. <clears throat> That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. It wasn't me. I swear it wasn't me. Hey, Susan. Hey, Susan. Ah. The evidence and testimony and. Yada yada. The victim was alone at his table when he drank from that coffee. No, you're wrong. I know what I saw. I saw. I saw. <laughs> saw someone else there. A man. He's the real killer. Why won't anyone believe me? No, no I'm just adjusting this a little bit. Good enough. This court finds the defendant. Guilty. Guilty. This court is adjourned. That's not bad. Six ten a.m. Right and coming by. What? Rider. Rider blonde ale. Number eight. Rider number eight. Yep. Ah, start of the new year always makes me feel like I can take on the whole world. Bet it does, Maya. So, I decided that our resolution should be Zvari, take on the world. What do you think? Sure, Zvari. whatever, Maya. But I think you've made... You've had more than enough mistletoe cake. Never. You've got to eat a lot of cake during New Year's. It's practically a tradition. Like watching the fireworks on TV or playing a board game. Hey, pal. Gumshoe! Detective Gumshoe. Happy New Year, Detective. Uh, likewise. Now listen up, right? I want to... Here's to another fruitful year of lawyer police cooperation. Um, yeah, me too. Alright, pal, you've got some explaining to do. You got a holiday present for me, Detective? A what? Well, I, am um, here, I have this. It's really not much, but... Yay, thanks! Look, pal, we need to have a talk. Take a seat. Hey, what about Pearly? 
You haven't forgotten her present, have you? Uh, no, I mean, yes, I mean, no. Are, are you doing this on purpose? I <laughs> guess I'm busted. How'd you like my first practical joke of the year? Very funny, pal. Now let's see how funny you think it is when I show you this. What is it? Magazine? Hey, I want to see. Deadly poisoning brings guilty verdict. Defense attorney right trounced. Trounced? Let me see that. Defense attorney gave an almost childishly amateur performance yesterday. What the heck is this? It's a report, pal, about you. Listen to this. Mr. Wright must take full responsibility for the ruling in this case. Well, don't tell me you don't remember anything about it. But I don't remember anything about it. When was that issue from, anyway? Um, December of last year, which I guess makes it last month. Which makes it old news, you mean. But I wasn't involved in a poisoning case in December. Hmm. So what do you think of this is all about, Nick? If it wasn't you, pal, then that leaves only one possibility. No way. You don't mean... A phony Nick? What? Phony Nick? This must be Gumshoe's idea of a joke. Guess he's starting off the year with one, too. <sighs> so, what are you gonna do about it, pal? What do you mean, what am I gonna do about it? Well, it's your fault that the, f that the judge found the defendant guilty in this case. My fault? How do you figure that? Because the Phoenix Wright is super famous now. Well, maybe only sort of. Yeah, see what happens when you hotshots start getting too full of yourselves? I didn't do anything wrong. At least not that I can remember. Better make this right, pal. Now. Why is he so hard up about this? That means taking the case back to court. Got it? Sounds like we've got our first case of the new year. Let's tackle it with gusto. I don't know. The judge already issued a guilty verdict once in this case. It's not going to be easy to get it overturned. I guess that New Year's resolution is going to have to wait until next year. So you're taking the case, right? Good. I'm going to head over to the courthouse then. After that, I'll go back to the precinct. Drop by if you need something, okay, pal? Guess people are starting to know the name Phoenix, right? The client entrusted a case to me based on my reputation. Guess I am kind of responsible. But why would someone want to impersonate me? What sort of guy would do that? Go that. Oh, seriously? I don't, I don't remember. I, I've never played this, so I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Good guess, though. The detention center. January 6th, detention room. Detention center, visitor's room. So nerve-wracking way to meet our new client. I wonder just what kind of person you tricked and got found guilty. Keep it down, Maya. That kind of talk could ruin me. Ah! How could you, Mr. Wright? How could you do this to me? You put me in solitary. I haven't been able to stop crying. Aren't, aren't you... Yes, I am. I'm totally and utterly let down. Ah, you're... Are you... Pretend you don't know know me. It's Maggie, remember? Oh, Maggie Bird. Police lady. Remember she was with her boyfriend? The guy killed him? Maybe. Maggie Bird. Ah, here. Flashback. No problem, Susan. <coughs> Maggie Bird. She's a policewoman I defended that one time. She was accused of murdering her lover. He was a cop, too. User left your channel. What are you doing in here? Didn't I get you acquitted? Oh, sure. Very funny. After that fifth-rate defense job, you come in here and start making jokes? You better hurry up and tell her what happened, Nick. Oh, I see. So that's what where we stand right now. I'm sorry you've been caught up in another murder. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. I vaguely remember her saying the exact same thing last time. Wow, well, mine, that's what what's one more disaster in my life? At least now the real Mr. Ray is here with me. I want the what? I won't let the world keep me down, sir. How come you're dressed like that, Maggie? Last year you looked so sharp in that police uniform. Hmm, <laughs> I was fired after that incident last year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, I don't mind one bit. 
I enjoyed being on the force, but I think it was time for me to move on. So what do you do now? Second act of the life of Maggie Bird, I'm playing the role of a waitress. Waitress? Yes, in a French restaurant. It's a small place, but it's quite fashionable. My charming smile and shapely figure came through for me. And the owner, Mr. Armstrong, hired me straight away, sir. And you got in this mess straight away. Straight away, right? Yeah, you can put it out. This whole mess started on the 3rd of last month. It happened at Trey Bien. Trey Bien? Yes, it's a restaurant where good service and a friendly smile are always included. Oh. There were two men at the table, both drinking coffee. And then... One of the men slipped poison into the victim's cup. The victim took just one sip and was gasping for air. I was so shocked, I passed out. Hey, hold on there, Maggie. What? You keep calling the guy the victim. Didn't you know the guy who was killed? Not at all. I've never seen the guy before. Oh. So she wouldn't have had a motive to kill him then, I guess. The other man, the killer, you saw him, right? Of course. Good waitress must be attentive to the clientele. So you saw the killer, but you were found guilty of the crime anyway? How come? You tell me, Mr. Wright. Ack. Because that's the answer. The answer to my question is my phony. Anyway, she saw the killer. Better see if I can get a description of the guy. So if you saw the murder, why were you still convicted? Because no one else saw. Saw what? The other man. The one who put the poison in the victim's coffee. Everyone testified that way. Mr. Armstrong, customer, everyone. The victim was sitting alone at his table the whole time. But how's that possible? I don't know, but nobody, not one person would believe me, sir. Even Phoenix Wright, my one last hope for a fair trial, failed me. What a pathetic defense. My granny could have done a better job. Look, that wasn't me, okay? And then, they found something a bit incriminating in my apron pocket. Mm -hmm. What? Small bottle of poison. What? Poison? It was in your pocket? Well, I passed out when the victim collapsed. I need to pause up with that. You gotta take that back up? Yeah. Oh, wait. Or you want me to come with? Put it back here. I'll just chill. You alright? Yeah. She'll be right back. My ice cream boy. I did not. No, you're good.
Killer must have slipped the poison into my pocket when I was unconscious. No one else saw the other guy? This other guy? No sir, that's what everyone said, but I don't see how they could have missed him. I was the I was the one who took the coffee to the two men. Oh? And what was your impression of them? Well, when I first saw them, I thought thought they might be in the music industry. In music, how come? Well, one of them had some sort of earpiece and an emo musician's look about him. There was a sample CD on the table, sir. An earpiece and a sample CD, huh? Did you get a look at the CD at all? It had a band's name written on it. I think it was MC something. They must have been preparing for their debut, I guess. So it's a band CD. Maybe a promo disc? Maybe it was MC Screwdriver. Get serious, Maya. Did you buy the CD of a group named that? Ugh. What was the name of that group again? MC Hacksaw? No, MC... What about the killer? What did he look like? Well, I, um... I don't really remember. Only that he was a young man, well-built like the victim, really. Dang it. Oh, yeah. I need to ask you about this. Hey, this article's about my case. Can you tell me anything about the guy who was pretending to be me? Yes, sir. It was the morning after I had been arrested. I met you in the visitor's room here. You were wearing one of your super sharp suits. Me? Yes, you, Mr. Wright. Arg. Hey, Maggie. Is my evil double I am here, too? No, I don't remember a phony you, Maya. Oh. I would have been so cool. Then you got really worked up and passionate. I'm gonna get you cleared of this crime, you said. Okay, I get the picture, but you've met me in person before. So how come you didn't realize that guy wasn't the real me? I guess, looking back now, it was a little strange. Only a little? Well, okay, so you're a bit taller than normal, and you looked a bit shady. Your voice was a little... So the guy was nothing like me, then. But he had your spiky hair and blue suit. Is that all it takes for someone to imitate me? But everyone else in the courtroom, like the judge and the observers. Didn't they realize he was an imposter? Everyone had these big question marks on their faces. But it seemed that no one wanted to say anything, sir. This case just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Yeah. Mr. Wright, do you think it's possible to get a retrial? Probably. The court ruled in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. So we should be able to get a retrial. Um, Mr. Wright? Do you think we'll win next time, sir? My life has been a full course meal of bad luck, complete with defeat for dessert. Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, Jesus. I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. I even landed a phony, phony lawyer when I had the misfortune of being accused of murder. But I will survive because Maggie Bird always lives to fight another day. And one day I'll find it. Just you wait and see, sir. I'll find that one single moment of good luck. This poor our, girl. Our Xin Eof is going to really pay for this. What are you staring at me like that for? But Maya's right. Whoever it is, I thought it was a good idea to use my name. Get an innocent girl convicted of murder had better watch out. We'll find him, don't you worry. We'll get Zinio for you. Thank you. Oh, I'll tell you where Trey Vienna is then. Trey... Ah, right. The restaurant where the murder took place. Yes, sir. When you go, please tell Mr. Armstrong I said hi. Sure. Alright, Nick, let's go check out this restaurant and it's food. Of course, you gotta check out the restaurant. It's food. She'd be stuffing her face while I'm searching for clues. Yep. That'd be me. Oh. Yeah, it's a French restaurant. Very pink. Why is the crime scene stuff still there? It's been a month. Huh? Oh. Well, look at this place. Look. More like smell. What is with the suffocating scent of flowers in here? Then again, girls like that, like that kind of thing, right? Actually, I'm not all that into it. No one's coming to see us. Maybe there's no one here. Don't be silly, Maya. This is a restaurant. It's open for business. Hello? Anyone here? I don't believe it. There really isn't anyone here. Perfect. Let's get intrusive. There's no one here. We can take anything we want. Yeah, Maya. I suppose we can. It's a rack full of fashion magazines, and they're all in French. Why don't you try wearing something a bit more chic sometime, huh, Maya? 
Yeah, I guess I could. I'm always in my acolyte clothes, aren't I? Be fun to wear normal clothes every now and then. Hmm? There's something stuffed in behind the rack. It's like a sports paper to me. Hey, and look at this. Someone scribbled a little doodle on one of the pages. See bomber and one, two, three, four, five zeros. A hundred thousand dollars, maybe? I wonder what MC Bomber is supposed to be. It's papers from December 3rd. It's papers from the day of the poisoning. What? Paper from the day of the murder. This has to be a clue. Should see if I can find out some more, inf more, some more about this paper. Oh, sports paper. Let's see, let's see. Did Guts and Braun manage to defend his heavyweight title? Sorry, Maggie, that paper is actually a month old. It's from the day of the murder. Gutson got knocked out yesterday, I'm afraid. Oh, no. I found this paper at the magazine rack at Trabian. Really? That's strange. Trabian doesn't get newspapers. Mr. Armstrong says he's not really fond of them. I'm gonna do this. So I don't have to keep doing that. Maybe one of the customers left it behind? Anyway, what I want you to take a look at is this, is this scribble here. Aha! That's it, sir! MC Bomber. That was the name that was written on the CD. Just as I thought. I guess it was an MC Screwdriver after all, huh? So that $100,000 must be a down payment for a record deal, right? If someone gave me $100,000, I'd sing for sure. Master of Kurain or Spirit Song or even Maya's theme. Um, okay, Maya. So the sample CD was on the victim's table. That means this newspaper may have belonged to the victim. You're right. So the victim left this behind on the day of the murder, huh? I think we better step up the investigation, don't you, Nick? Back to Trebian. Ooh la la, bonjour. Welcome to a la Trebian. Oh, hell happened to Maya? She's frozen stiff. Oh dear god. Bienvenue! Welcome to my petit restaurant. Oh, he's fancy. Huh? B Avenue? Oh, non, my petit chulip. Huh? Me? Look at his face, I like getting rejected by its own mother. Are you fatigued, no? Allo, you need this. An aromatic bath oil melange of la Nerole and la Rose. My personal recommendation. Oh, I'm gonna get stereotypical with him. Think I need what? Oui, oui, just add a couple of drops of this mixture to la bath water and voila. It will soothe your body and your mind. It's simply fantastic. Really? And for la monsieur? Who, me? Look at that face! Like a pup- like la puppy rejected by life itself! You are fatigued, non? For you, monsieur, I recommend this. Oil of bergamot. Maybe a hint of oui oui. I will add la peppermint and la clary sage for a fragrance exceptional. Such an invigorating recipe will bring out your delicious beauty, monsieur. My beauty? Hello! If you'll be seated, I will bring you the special menu of the day. Actually, we're not here to eat. We're lawyers. Ma bien sûr. I know this already, monsieur. You are La Phoenix right, non? Um, yes. You know me? Ah, oui, oui. I never forget the man who flirts with me, especially in court. Oh, shit. Guess he was cross-examined by our mysterious Zin Eve. Looks like everyone to do with this case knows who I already I am already. I wonder what sort of impression Xenios been leaving on people, don't you? Allow me to introduce myself to you again. I am Jean Armstrong. Enchanté. Okay. What does Trey BM mean? Very good. I know Trey, that means three, right? Oh. Oh yeah, it is Trey. Oh. No, no, those tres, that's Spanish. Tres is... No, no, no. Tres bien is Francais. In English, you would say very good. Ha ha! Got it! I remember French somewhat. 
Oh, very good. We oui, exact a month. La atmosphere is très bien and la cuisine is très bien. The food's so good, why aren't there any customers in here? But cuisine is not for all. Some people they do not appreciate la haute cu la la haute cuisine. I forget how to pronounce it. Thought everyone liked hot cuisine. Since I have lost Maggie, I do not have enough hands. You're running the place on your own now? Oui. For the moment. No one has answered my advertisement or pour moi. Please don't eyeball me while you say that. I am the chef, I am the manager, I am also a trained aromatherapist. <laughs> a roaming what? A practitioner de aromatherapy. La art of soothing la soul with the delicate floral aromas. Delicate? The smell coming from that bottle earlier was anything but. You're having a ball with us, aren't you? Yes, I am. So could you tell me what you know about the incident? The inn. Makes me sad to remember it, yet I remember it so well. More than a month has passed since it happened. Yeah, I guess it's been about a month since Maggie's sentencing. So it was the third of last month, just after one in the afternoon. A man who was in the air for coffee suddenly became ill. Because the poison was coffee? That is the truth as I know it. It was Maggie who took his drink to him. I was in the kitchen. I heard the sound of someone collapsing. When I came out to see what it was, he already slumped in his chair. He was dead? Mon dieu, oui, he was dead. Maggie had passed out also. This man who died, was he alone? Oui, monsieur. All alone. I know that Maggie said there was someone else, but... I see. La police, they asked me many times. Are you sure there was no one else at the table, they asked. But I am not the only one. La old man said the same thing. Old man? What old man? Oh, Max. Welcome back, Susan. Welcome back. No worries. No problem. I'm doing a horribly stereotypical French accent. Or, French. Yeah. Whatever. Um, so, who's this old man that you mentioned? At the time of the murder, there was another customer in here. What? Someone else saw it? My oui. As usual, he came alone that day. At the time of the murder, he was here. He saw it too. But he said the same thing, that, 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 that there was no one at the victim's table. Maggie swear there were two, swears there were two people. My mademoiselle, mademoiselle, the lawyer eh, could not prove this, no? About the lawyer. That was me, I suppose. Ma bien sûr! Well, he's the first person who said it wasn't me. Don't kid yourself, Nick. <laughs> now, who's the, one, who's the one making stuff up? Let's see. So present. Maggie was a Maggie was a policewoman once, n'est-ce pas? N'est-ce pas? Yes, but she also had to quit for um, reasons beyond her control. Oui, oui. She was the suspect in the murder investigation, non? <laughs> oh, that is technically true. I do have a chef's outfit. But no, this is not me. I don't, I don't have the swirly mustache thing. No. Or the rolled up goatee. Or the curly hair. Moving on. Oh, you know about that? That is why I gave, gave to her la perfume for la happiness. Happiness perfume? We oui. blended from bergamot like I've given to you before. But she's been arrested again and found guilty this time. This is true. A natural aroma of unhappiness must have been very strong. Just admit it, your perfume doesn't work. I'm not surprised she was the pr prime suspect. After something like that took place before my very eyes. Something like what? What's this guy talking about? Does this mean Maggie did have a motive? We've got to ask this guy for more info. Stat. Maggie took the coffee over to the victim. Did anything happen? We, oui, we, oui. I suppose you could say so. So what happened? None. It was, uh, it was nothing. Look, Maggie says she didn't even know the guy, but she's still being indicted for murder. The prosecution must have come up with some kind of motive. We, oui. it is true. If there's anything at all between Maggie and the victim, it could be relevant. 
So please, tell us anything you know. Uh-oh. Ooh. Cyclox. No, wait, what are we gonna do, Nick? Just had to What the? What's wrong? Mega It's gone! Huh? I had it in my pocket, but it's vanished into thin air! What? What? But I could see the Cyclops. Maybe that means the Magatama is nearby. Uh, Mr. Armstrong? Can I just confirm something with you again? The table where the victim was sitting. Was anyone else sitting there? That is a question you'll have to ask him yourselves. Huh? Him? The old man spends all of his time down to the park. A park? Oh, a park. What park's that? Behind the restaurant. It is, it is called Vitamin Square. Thank you. Je vous en prie, my dear. Let's go and check this Vitamin Square right now, Nick. And move to Vitamin Square. He likes the pigeons. You're fine, Willow. I scared the hell out of her, didn't I? Yeah, go lay down. Go lay down. You're good, Bed. girl. You're alright. Just throwing stuff out. Bed. You're okay. Bed. Willow. Bed. Go to your bed. Good girl. She's not feeling the greatest. So this is Vitamin Square. Yeah, I see where they get the name game from now. The food scream vitamins at you. Hey, Nick. That's the guy, right? That the old man Mr. Armstrong was talking about? That grouchy-looking grandpa? He's throwing seeds out for the pigeons. But he's not throwing seeds for them. He's throwing seeds at them. Oh, he's really grouchy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my grumpiness threat level has just been raised to red. Mm -hmm. What the hell's going on with his nose? Yeah, I think it was just so he, he thought noise that she was sleeping. It's okay. Lay down. No! Lay down. You're fine. Oh, there's a magazine here. It's a magazine full of job listings. You disgusting rogue picking up something someone else threw away. Threw away? Did you just throw... Did you throw this away? Are you looking for a job? Yep. Yeah, me too. Ka? It's none of your business. Sorry, I guess I'll just take the magazine with me then. I don't want anyone else having it. Give it back! Too bad. Now that you want it so bad, I don't want to give it up. Hey, that's mine! You just stole from an old man. That's wonderful. Mademoiselle! Yes? Are you looking for la job? What? No, no, I was just... Let me see, your style is a... Um, peu different, but you have a good face. Different? Felicitations! You have passed! I will hire you! Bien, come with me! I will teach you everything I know! Nick! Help! Oh no! I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. Maybe I should do both. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. There was a thing at the beginning of this case where she was in a waitress outfit. I think he forces her to become a waitress. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Oh, nope. I went to the wrong place. Dang it. Looks like they have Maggie questioning him. Pretty much asked her everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need. Yeah, I went, meant to go to criminal affairs. Had to come shoot. Well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? The one that's gonna find her innocent? Um, no, not yet. We've only just started our investigation. Well, whatever you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm putting off all, all my other cases for now, pal. Come shoot's really fired up about this. I think he likes her. Oh yeah, one more thing. The retrial's been approved. Court's sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Damn, he's fast. Godot's gonna be the prosecutor, of course. Oh, Jesus. Oh, him. Him is coffee. Now listen up, pal. Maggie's found guilty again. 
Yes. Um, I'll I'll make sure you get locked up for up good for it. Got it. Damn, Gumshoe. The hell is going on? Jeez. What's that? Sport <laughs> paper? Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Trebian. It's dated the same day as a murder. You may be onto something here. <laughs> Take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey, what is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber. Well, he actually seems to be thinking for once. Yeah, it's no good. I can't remember. And he goes back to being the gumshoe we all know and love. Hey, pal. Go borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I want to get a handwriting analysis done on the scribble. Handwriting, huh? Be good to know more about that in any case. Thanks, pal. I bet this will turn out to be an interesting clue. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The chef of Trebien, huh? You know what that chef said to me? Ooh la la, your body is full of latoxones. And then he gave me this bottle. What's in it? I don't know, the label says Juniper. I'm under orders to put a few drops of it on my, in my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know, there's something about that lady, I mean guy. Huh? You can't stop thinking about him? Not like that, pal. Give me a break. He's not my type. I mean, I can't stop thinking that he's involved with this case somehow. Sounds like he knows a little something more about our charming charming chef. Alright. So the guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force. You were her mentor when she was a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I mean, not too close. You know. Hey, what's with the funny looks, pal? I was just her... I wasn't anything like... Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training. But that was it. Nothing happened. Gumshoe, sure, is sweating up a storm over nothing. Uh, so that's it. Big old Gumshoe has a little old crush on me. <laughs> I, I don't like her or anything. I I was... Ah! <laughs> Note to self, gossip with Maya about this later. <laughs> Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? You've got to keep it a secret, got it? <laughs> sure. Would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? Hey, tell your face, pal, not me. You'd have to be blind to not see what's going on in your mind. <laughs> I was wondering, could you fill me in on the victim? Glenn Elk, he was a computer programmer. I see, a programmer. He was just a regular Joe working for a small-time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that day. And all she did was take him his cup of coffee on the day of the murder, pal. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant or off? Not according to the chef, said it was the first time he'd seen the guy. Programmer and a first time customer at that. What possible reason could Maggie have had to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was still somehow established in her trial. You're kidding, what was her supposed motive? Sorry, pal, I'm real busy. I haven't even got enough time to sift through these papers. Look into it yourself, okay? What could his motive have been? This isn't really a proper investigation. I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, that's right. Judge already ruled on the case, and all the evidence is in already. The only problem is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good for us, huh? Look, pal, I've got a mountain of papers on this case to look over before tomorrow. So I'm just going to say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... She's... Okay, so she's a bit out there and a bit off base sometimes, but she was a good cop. It's not exactly complimentary, you know. So what do you re what do you think really happened? Just how contradictory is her testimony? The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Maggie still insists there was another guy sitting with the victim. Right, but get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone, even the chef. But then there's that CD, and then there's that CD. CD? Oh yeah, she did mention something about the CD. And there was a sample CD on the table, sir. But our guys turned that place upside down, there was no CD. What? Not on the table, not anywhere in the whole restaurant, pal. But didn't Maggie see the victim was wearing an earpiece, too? Yeah, but that was for the portable radio in the front pocket of his hoodie. A radio? He didn't have a CD player? You got it. Your phony never explained that contradiction at all. Come to think of it, the owner of Trebian didn't mention that CD either. 
I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. So what exactly is that... What exactly is it that caught your attention about the chef at Trebien? It's, um, kind of hard to say. Guess probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, Detective. Didn't you say you'd give me the dirt on anything? Well, this sort of stuff is kind of unimportant gossipy stuff, you know, pal? Look, how about this? You go to Trebien and investigate the place yourself. And if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you report back to me, okay? Um, don't suppose I get a choice in this, huh? Guess I'd better find out more about the chef and Trebien, then report back to Gumshoe. Back to Trabian. January 6th, Trabian. Said the flower is sure is strong, it's almost making me dizzy. Oh, um, hello. What was that just now, a customer? He had a sort of dark aura about her. Ah, welcome, B Avenue! Wow, what a cute voice. Yep. Oh, it's just you, Nick. Oh, Maya? Maya. Well, how do I look? Maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. I mean, you're my first ever customer. And who was that woman I just saw? Oh, oh, since you're here, you might as well have something to eat. I am kind of hungry, actually. How did he suck her into that? So how do you like your new job, Maya? Never knew that there was such so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make coffee, work the cash register. Of course, we need a customer before I can do any of that. Yeah, it's it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my give me a tip smile. <laughs> hey Nick, why don't you order something? Chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? It's a twin tea set, so it's twenty dollars, of course. The twin tea set, I believe. I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. What? But you can't. Come on, Nick. It's not every day I get to be a waitress. I want to try carrying plates and working cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Oh, Lord. Yeah, right. Maybe later. Um, about the lunch. Oh, a fine choice, sir. No, I am... Um... Kitchen! A lunch special, please! With all the extras. Drink, side, sell, dessert, and gift! I don't need any of that. Just a moment, please, sir. I was really getting into this. So how much is this lunch set? The set lunch then? $20, huh? Yeah, yeah. But with the drink side salad and dessert, it's $45? Oh, Lord. Hey, wait a sec. Maya. Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. There you are. Deluxe Fortify lunch set. Whoa. Just inspired by lobster and abalone fricassee with a balsamic vinaigrette. Bon appetit. Um, thanks. Come on, Nick. Hurry up and try it already. Lobster, huh? All right. Down the hatchet goes. Erp. Well, are you hungry, Maya? I'm starving. Here, it's yours. Really? Er Remember, Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you better polish off that plate. I just remembered, I gotta go clean the toilets. Hey! Can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. <laughs> Cost $20, despite how unbelievably bad it tastes. Gordon <sighs> Ramsay all of a sudden. It's fucking raw! <laughs> You're gonna kill people! You fucking donkey! Sounds like Shrek sometimes. How's that guy manage to make good food taste so bad? Hey Nick, you wanna take a peek at the kitchen? The kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Now, what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all the chef's greatest secrets. In the kitchen. Mm, that sounds tasty. Hey, wait up. Maya. What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. Weren't you going to show me around? There goes my plan to find some cool clue and show it off in your face. I better conduct the search myself. In the kitchen myself. Is this guy a chef or is he an interior decorator? Jesus. Look, it is a... And here it is, the famous Trabian Kitchen. 
My first time in here, too, actually. It's a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we better search quickly. Chop, chop. Now I know that I'm in, now I know I'm in a French restaurant. I've never heard of most of these seasonings. Hey Nick, this container has oyster sauce? What's that? Isn't that using Chinese food? Ah, look, right there on the counter. My Magatama, what's it doing there? What indeed? <coughs> Seems like he's a thief. Magatama put in pocket. What's this? Looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Let's see, one, two, three, ninety-eight, and ninety-eight, and hundred. They're all the same, too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? It doesn't even have a label on it, either. And it doesn't smell. So what's that liquid inside, then, or, then I wonder? Hey, Nick, we should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss one, will he? <coughs> Back to the Criminal Affairs Department. Hope should get this tested. Yep. Hey, you're just in time. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? Well, I've got back to me about that newspaper you gave me. It must be in the sports paper with the memo scribbled on it. So, what did they say? Did the analysis turn, any turn up anything? It said the doodle was written by the victim, Glenn Elg. No doubt about it. I expected as much. The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. It's our best interpretation of the facts at the moment. MC Bomber. I get the feeling I've heard that name somewhere before. I wonder if he was a hacker and it was some kind of virus program. MC Bomber. Oh well, I guess it'll come back to me. Don't forget to report back to me with whatever you find in the restaurant, okay pal? Since when did I start taking orders from Gumshoe? Although, I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. Got one of those aroma bottles, too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Huh? I don't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same, wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle that doesn't smell, huh? It smells like a skunk to me, pal. Mind letting me borrow that bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. A small bottle given to Detective Gumshoe. I had a hunch there was something funny about that chef. You suspect Jean, Jean Armstrong? I got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. It must be the same secret Gumshoe was talking about before. Guess I'd better fill you in on the details. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. What's Mr. Armstrong's secret? You ever had lunch at Trey Bien, pal? Um, yes. So how was it? To put it nicely, it was inedible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason that place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean, and he's got a girl like Maggie as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess it's probably the food. Real scoop on the guy is... He's up to his ears in debt. Really? How much does he owe? It's a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million in the red. Half a million? Are we talking dollars? Yeah. Hey, if, I, if it was Sterling, he'd be really in trouble. <laughs> Sorry, that figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises, and I'd be willing to bet that chest got something to do with most of them. That's my hunch. Alright. Okay. Yep. There's a scooter there now. It's all banged up. And the old guy's not here anymore. Drat. And I still have some unanswered questions for him. Scooter, huh? Who'd leave it park who'd leave it right in the middle of a park like this? The wheel guard and the light are busted. 
Guess it must have been in an accident. It's totally wrecked. Well, I know who poisoned him now. Take a look at the hair. Hey, what are and... you? And impersonated him. Yep. Hey, what do you think she is doing with my bike? Yep. Yes, I can. No, I was just... Grrr, you've been messing with my new ride, is that what you've been doing? New ride, isn't that kind of an old... Grrr, he's gonna pay for this. It wasn't me, I was just passed by... Hey, who, who's the one that covered my salad crap, huh? Grrr, you've gonna pay, catch my drift? No, wait a second, I'm not... I'm not pigeon, so I couldn't have done it. A wise guy, eh? I to beat you so hard, it'll feel like you was smooching the express train. A lot of accents I can do in this one this time. That's fun. Yeah, it's a jersey. Sounds like it. Uh-oh. He's better watch your bag and say it over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers and then you's gonna pay. Um, actually I'm a lawyer myself. What'd you say? A Phoenix Wright, attorney at law. <laughs> Phoenix, right? You saying you, Phoenix, right? Um, yeah, I am. So you a wise guy too, huh? Cause I'm Phoenix, right? The one and only. What? What? Out of my way! I got a cruise. What? He he's gone. Surely that guy was my phony. Was he? Uh huh. Yeah, uh huh. he was my friend. He wasn't anything that like he me. Was. Guess I better make a note of Scooter. <laughs> Written by my phony. The wheel guard is all smashed up. Ta! Pathetic! Oh, it's you. A few threats from a little brat like that? And you look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes. Have you been here the whole time, then? I was in that strawberry. I had some thinking to do. Or like you had some cowering to do. Um, excuse me. Would you mind if I had a word with you? Yes. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. What's the matter with you? Can't you see I'm busy? So you like my seeds, eh, pigeons? So you don't like my seeds, eh, pigeons? He's really chucking those seeds at them. That's kind of hurt. Go on. Eat this. Uh. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you about Maggie Bird? I don't know any Maggie Bird. Yes, you do. You know the waitress of Trabian? Hmph. If you ask me, it's a disgrace. That's what it is. An innocent young girl revealing herself like that. So you don't like that kind of thing, huh? What are you trying to say about me, boy? Explain yourself. Um, nothing. I'm not saying anything about you. I know you're kind, you young ones with your spiky hair and your fancy suits. The head of yours is overflowing with filthy ideas. I know someone who needs to learn some stress management. Get out of here, you young brat. Do you go to Trabian a lot? Hmm, <laughs> that miserable excuse for a restaurant? A garbage they serve and there's not food. Where's the sushi? The tempura? The rice? Trabian is a French restaurant, sir. Where do you think we are, boy? In Paris? I want some real food, not those snooty snacks. What about those shameless girls? You mean the waitresses? You can see all the way up to their... their... Yes, the waitresses! They're practically naked! It's a disgrace, isn't it? Well, isn't it? Listen, it's not my restaurant. Ha! It's a miserable excuse for a restaurant that place. Miserable. Certainly knows the place. It must be a regular. But if he hates it so much, why does he keep going? Are you a regular at that restaurant, sir? Just that if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? There you are, you filthy pigeons! Do you want food? Ha ha! Take that! I knew it, this old guy's got something to hide, but what could it be? Time to bust you open. Trade me in regular. It's time you told me the truth. Why are you a regular at a restaurant that you dislike so much? Isn't it obvious? 
people only have one reason to go to restaurants. To eat. To eat? Is that the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. You insolent. Brad, how dare you accuse me? What proof have you got? You tell it that not you nor anyone else in the world would go to a place like that for its food. Proof is in the pudding, or in this case, the lunch menu. That's a twin tea set. Food at Trebian is terrible and expensive. Wrong, it's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a lot of work. I haven't done a jot of work since I was born, other than feeding the pigeons. What a load of crock. Tastes another story, but the price is nothing to me. So you're saying that you go there because you've got a, you've got money to burn? Exactly. I have so much cash, I go for a swim and my money vault every day. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's a lie. What? You don't have money to burn, you're flat broke. This is yours, right? My magazine. Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? I I was So what? I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot of the buying a lot at the moment. I need spending money. DOC. Hi. Hi. Do. Good thing. Oh, sorry. If I can remember, there it is. Look at me! I'm on a motherfucking dinosaur. There we go. Oh, that's. Ooh, piece of cake. I think it's. Ooh, piece of candy. There we go. Ooh, piece of candy. 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 I need to update the list of them. Oh. I don't go to a restaurant for food. I just go for the Java Chino. <laughs> ah, it's no problem. It's not like I I do all those all the time anyway. Yeah, I think you mean a cappuccino. Anyway, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. Those would better be some golden beans. What's your problem? You think a poor man would be better off drinking dishwater, do you? Is that it? No, I wasn't thinking that. I was wondering if the coffee there is really that great. Yeah, seriously. What is no, this, Starbucks? Not. But, <laughs> but anyway, yes, that place has free newspapers to read every day. Newspapers? Exactly. They don't want me hanging around at home, so I go there. I'm sorry, sir. But there are no free papers to read at Trade Me Take a look at this. What is it? It's a newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Trade Me So, what up? Oh, yeah. I think it sucks that they charge so much for, like, soy. Easier to get. Yeah, that. really. I agree. I am lactose intolerant, too. It sucks. I like dairy, but dairy hates me. So, what of it? This is the only paper there, and it's dated more than one month ago. What? Don't you see what I'm getting at here? That restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is just one that a customer happened to leave behind. It's like ice cream and stuff. I love the ice cream. But it hates me. Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? I'm not hiding anything. I'm going to have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason why you go so much to Trebian is... Make my usual order. What are you asking me about that girl for? She was a waitress at Trebian. Ah! Therefore, the answer to the mystery of why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant is a waitress. Arg! But I don't recognize that face. You're probably telling the truth here. Because you were looking at the girl's face. But at her outfit. That's the truth, isn't it? You became a regular at the restaurant because the waitress's uniform. A uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Uh, uh, I, can, I can't take it. I like Frappuccinos. Even if it's in the middle of frickin' winter, I'll get a Frappuccino. Phew, that waitress was your... Enough! Please! No more! Stop saying that word! Stop saying waitress! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it!
Um, sir? Yes, it's true. I was there for the young girl. Fine, so I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old devil. No, no. I didn't mean it like that. I even get one of those lousy cup of, cups of Java Chino every time for eight dollars! All because the serving girl. Punish me. Lock me up. Really, that's not what I'm here for. You'll be the same another 20 years and you'll understand what it's like. You'll know how painful it is to be an old man like me. No, really. Listen, sir. Stop calling me that. I have a name, you know, boy. Show some respect, huh? It's Victor Kudo. Sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. I won't tell you anything more. This guy was in the restaurant at the time of the incident. Which means I have to hear his testimony one way or another. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. So it's oat milk. Jeez. I've never tried the oat milk. I've only got gotten like the soy, which I think is like an extra 30. 30 or 50, I can't remember. So this, so this guy's just a dirty old man. He likes the waitresses with uniforms. He's an old man. What else has he got going on in his life? He's a dirty old man. How is he dirty? He's a dirty old man. No, he thinks he's a dirty old man, but how is he a dirty old man? He goes into what? Look at... to ogle the waitresses. It's yeah, like going to Hooters. a dirty old man. But he, it's like going to Hooters. Yeah, there's dirty old men that go there. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> See, the classy old men go to Tilted Kilt. Where they got the kilts. Really, really tiny kilts. Anyways. Oh... 80 cents? Well, maybe it is. I don't remember. I thought it was 50 cents last time, but then again, I got a different drink, too, so it might be different, too. Oh, wait, then again, you... Oh, I forgot the exchange between American and Canadian money, too. Yeah, I was about to say. But still, 80 fucking cents is ridiculous. Almost feel like you can go to the store and buy your own stuff and pour it into the thing when they're done. No milk whatsoever, I got it myself. Delicious. Hmm. I don't believe this, I even broke his Cyclops and everything. I guess I'll have to try to get him when he's in better mood. Back to Trabium. Yeah, seriously. I mean, normal... Don't normal books usually have, like, U.S. this and then C.A. this? It's usually like a dollar or so difference. Just get the flat rate. Well, we don't know because the, the money fluctuates so badly. Fuck you. Oh, that's that old man. He's still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. I got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch. Hey, Maya, would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh? Me? Why? There's something I really want to ask that old man. Oh, my God. She's going to throw him. Oh, yeah, it's probably changed. I haven't paid attention in a while, sorry. Bad Phoenix. Sure, okay. I'll just get changed. No, hang on. Can you go like that? I guess. Jesus! That's a lot more! Damn! Wait, hold on. Hold on, that's gonna bug me. I don't think it used to be that much, right? Yeah, there's, there's a ton of difference between us and Canada. It's like, this is a hardback right here. This one's $21.99 in the U.S. and $26.99 Canadian. But then again, the Junji Ito, Ito book is probably thicker. That was also way back in the day, too. That's why I was thinking it was only a couple of bucks. This is a soft cover. This is, what, $14.99 and $19.99 Canadian. They're probably saying that now just because it's changed so drastically, I suppose. That makes a bit more sense. 
But I'm guessing the Junji Ito book was, since it's 35, it's probably like that thick. Or has more stuff to it. It's a more expensive one, I've got. Oh, here's one. Ugh. Nope. This one does not have Canadian on it. Most of my stuff is older. No, I probably not. I usually get my Junji Ito, Ito fix from Valve. I guess. Plus, all the pricing and stuff is probably from older books too. Oh, sir. Hmm. You again? Hmm. Well, well, I see. Uh, Nick, his eyes are burning into me. See? Dirty old man! Okay. It's creepy! <laughs> it's okay, I think it's going pretty well. Ah! Huh? You're still, you're still just a little chop. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, 615 pages, yeah, okay. That makes sense why it was $35 to start with anyway. I can only imagine how much the uh, the Sandman books, the hardcovers, cost. We're no longer playing the slide, all right? Play on the slide. Arr, we were so close. Just a little more, and he would have spilled. Hmm. 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 Pigeon. Hmm. God. Let me crack this guy. Excuse me, please, sir. Quiet. Can't you see I'm feeding the pigeon? <laughs> Oh, Lord. Yeah. See, he's a dirty old man. Yeah. <laughs> Those don't even look like that skimpy of uniforms, though. We also know how short it is. Yeah. Well. U.S. and then how much in Canadian? Or is that Canadian? Well, she's a, the berserk. She's, well, yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, that is Canadian. Okay, so I'm guessing the U.S. would probably be about fifty. That was the book that Gig had, oh. that big thick leather bound thing he had. Oh. Uh, He's very big in the berserk. But yeah, that's still ridiculous. There's no reason for it to be that expensive. If you don't mind, sir. I'd really love to talk with you. <laughs> God damn it. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, certainly. I'm Victor, Victor Kudo. Even from beyond the grave. <laughs> Fair enough. Wow. I'm gonna have to... I'll have to take some pictures of my book collection and send it to you, Ellie's. I have lots and lots of books. About the incident... You mean the man who died after drinking the Javachino? It's like he's a different person. It was quite a shock, even for me. He was a strange looking boy. The girl that girl took the Javachino over to him, you see. And was the customer alone? Definitely. He was the only person at the table. Then he took one sip of his Javachino and 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 he said something like, Ugh! and then collapsed, dead. Oh how terrifying. You're so good at listening, aren't you? Oh, this is gross. <laughs> he's a lonely old man. A dirty old man. I know he's a lonely, dirty old man, but hey, at least he's not throwing seeds at pigeons anymore. I'll tell you anything, whatever you want to know. <laughs> see? Certainly seems to be telling the truth now. It looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see this other man either. Yeah, it must, it's got to have jumped up lately, because all the stuff I have, it's usually within 2 or $3. Now it's oh, like 10 Everybody should go look at my new Stephen King book and see, because I just, that just came out. And awesome. I just got it. Which one is that? The, um, Fairy Tale. Oh, Fairy Tale, right. That would probably have the updated pricing. That's over 10 that's like a, oh, that's $9, actually. $9, yeah, it's a big difference. That's ridiculous, though. 
Like I said, back in... Do they use... So they use dollars, too, there. Canadian dollars. Mm. It's CAD. C-A-D. Oh. So, are, so is there... That might... There's a difference, then, between us, theirs and ours. Yes, there's... It used to be smaller, is what I'm saying. Oh. Because, like, um... Like, when I visited Canada back in... Oh, dear God. Kyle was with us, so it must have been back in, like, the 90s. We went to Canada, and we got Canadian coins. The exchange rate was a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. I think theirs was... Their money... You paid more for in their stuff than other things. Yeah. Yeah. You go to a check or you go to a bathroom. Both. Gotcha. I'll wait for you to come back so that we can make fun of this guy more. Or I'll come back with you. Or I'll come up with you. Okay, grab another booze. I'm enjoying it. What? Just one more. It's still the pricing. Yeah. Ugh, the inflation sucks. We'll be right back. Sure. Yeah, we'll be fine. Make you guys want to go out? You guys want to go out? No? You gonna stay here? Okay. I think we're good.
Hey guys. We're back. That's the other one I was gonna check. Uh, no. Oh, uh, that was the other one I was gonna check real quick. So we looked at a couple of books. Um. The. There were like f four or five books difference. Okay, now this is different because this is a this is a graphic novel. This is Bone. Thirty nine dollars U.S., forty eight dollars Canadian. Oh, yeah, and like I was looking at some of my books, there was like a four or five dollar difference. What was the fairy tale? Fairy tale was thirty two fifty and forty nine ninety nine. Thirty nine ninety nine. Thirty nine ninety nine. So I guess it's the graphic novels that are a little bit more expensive. Yeah, because like I looked at um, like a Colleen Hoover book that she's a newer big author right now that everybody's going nuts for. Um, Hoover. Colleen Hoover. Hoover. One was seventeen ninety nine here, and then twenty two ninety nine in Canada. Seven. And then the other one was six seventeen ninety nine. And twenty two ninety nine. Ninety nine, and then I had a Nora Roberts book. It was twelve here, sixteen there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've already been talking about it, and I, yeah, <laughs> I read one of them. Oh, Shroom's here. Hi, Shroom. And I have two more. Wait, what's so bad about Colleen Hoover? Is it just because it's a craze? Probably. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why she's so big right now. Like, I well, I read one of them. I I enjoyed it. No, you devoured that book fast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's problematic is I didn't know that. <laughs> like how so? Like personal, personality wise, or something? Like J.K. Rowling type? Ooh. Oh. That's not good. Is that, uh, is that it ends with us? It's not that series that it ends with us or it starts with us. Oh. Ooh. So it's kind of, oh, okay. I just read Verity. That was, that was, yeah. That was a whole messed up thing, too. Oh, so she's like a messed up version of... What was that? Oh. Is it Steel? Romance novel, people. Yeah, I read Verity, that's, and then the only other two I own are... It, it starts with us and it, it ends with us. And it's Danielle Steele, Steel, thank yeah. you. That, of course, it's not Danielle Steele. It's written by a hundred other people under Danielle Steele, but yeah. Or I could be wrong about that. Don't hate me if I'm wrong. Because I can't remember. I thought it was kind of like the Nancy Drew books, where there was a bunch of people who wrote them, but just under Nancy Drew. Under, no, it was, oh, what was... Uh... I don't know who... Yeah, now I'm drawing a blank, too. Damn it. You know what I'm talking about. The author of the Nancy Drew books. I'm pretty sure some of them were, because, I mean, she's continuing even to today, so... Caroline Keene. Yep, Caroline Keene. Thank you. That I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I'm going to continue this, though. While he's being dirty. At least I'm going to show you, send you some pictures of my book collection. It's getting problematic. It's not getting problematic. <laughs> no, we're just running out of shelves. 
That is my book collection back there. Oh, that's disgusting. That's not good. That is disgusting. Kind of like talking to my father. He used to get pissed off at Grey's Anatomy for having, what is it, integrated relationships. Oh yeah, totally. Just like we should totally separate J.K. Rowling from her work. Uh, well, it's kind of hard to do that when she's like, well, if you buy my stuff, then yeah, I know. you're supporting me. You see, that, that, kind of, that kind of stuff started, like, for me with Orson Scott Card. Because Orson Scott Card is a huge, huge asshole. His books are decent. But you can, set, you can see a lot of the problems he has come through in the books, too. Oh, okay. Well, hey, that's good. If Warner Brothers owned it, money doesn't go to her. Oh. That would be the game. Oh. Good. No, but Orson Scott Card, what the hell? Is he a homophobe? I think he was a homophobe. Now, now I'm curious. Oh, Orson's got card is more? That makes sense. Yes, monstrously homophobic. Yep. He's racist, he advocates violence and lobbies against fundamental human rights. Yeah. So he's, he's a bastard. He's a good author. He's a bastard. Who's that? Orson's got a card. Oh. <clears throat> Ender's Game. Ender's Shadow. Shadow of the Hegemon. I've heard of Ender's Game. Yeah. Thank you. There's a whole series of those books. We also did a whole series called Funimation. <laughs> Fair enough. And I've read most of them. Like, there's the stack that I show that is for this year. Then there's one shelf, so that picture with the uh, Totoro stuff on it and my little octopus. The fourth shelf down are the books I haven't read. I haven't read... The third shelf has the Wizard of Oz books, and I haven't read those. And I haven't read some of the Stephen King books on the top shelf. Actually, she but gets, other than that, I've read all of those books. She gets, I'm working through them. She gets mad at me because when I start wanting to get more books, I'm like, okay, i got to get rid of some of my books. Like, Why are you getting rid of books? I'm like, because I read them once and I don't want to read them again. There's certain books I've read through where I'm like, I, I'm not going to read them again. There's only been a few books that I reread. Hell, I bought Fifty Shades of Grey, read through that whole thing, and then got rid of it. I have the Fifty... Oh, I do have those books, too, somewhere. Oh, <laughs> That's not on my bookshelf. <laughs> I read through them before the They're in a the drawer somewhere. I read through them before the movies came out and stuff, and I used to make fun of people. I'm like, why do you like that? It's not a good do story. Do I have it? No. It, they're weird. Most of my stuff is a science fiction stuff, or... Oh, do I not own that book? I thought I bought it. Actually, puzzle boxes are on that shelf right there. Oh, I thought I bought it. What, Fifty Shades of Grey? No. Oh, yeah, I do with that one. It's called Small Steps to Year I Got Polio. I don't know why I love that book. Like, it's an autobiographical book. But I love that book. And I've read it like four or five times. Ooh. Speaking of which, the one book I finally found from when I was a kid that I absolutely loved. I finally found it on Amazon and I started reading it to her. was uh, The Westing Game. 
the Dorothy Must Die books, the Dorothy Must Die series, the whole time I was reading that, I was like, I could see this as like a TV, like a, like, it'd be kind of scary, like it'd be kind of, but I could see it as like a movies or like a. Okay, in all honesty, like when it comes to the rolled out um, books, I love those. Like a TV show or something, like they were really good. The one I used to read a lot when I was younger was the BFG. The big friendly giant. Because mm -hmm. all the other giants were assholes, they eat kids. But the BFG was nice. Really? Oh yeah, probably. <sighs> Anyways. So, do you like the food at Trivia? Well, of course. I'm really quite a sophisticated man. As a young businessman once, you know. I set up a casino in my heyday. Really? How interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. What a lovely story. London's in England, not France. Oh yes, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. That's too much. I can't take it. I want France. <laughs> can't believe Mia's laughing at the guy. Uh... Yeah, Mia, please. Mia will do anything to get what she needs. You visit Trade Vienna a lot, huh? <laughs> of course! I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. <laughs> really? Oh, you flatter me so. <laughs> the owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. <laughs> be careful of that chef, my dear. The chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right. That man's an ex-con. He, oh. He's an ex-con. Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh no. Those eyes. I can't take this. <laughs> he's really got this guy eating out of her hand. He steals things for his customers. From, From his customers? customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little little things mainly. Yep. <laughs> he's a pilferer, so you can... You be careful around him, my dear. Are you sure about this? Of course. He was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my Javachino. He really is a regular. Dude, did you hear what was happening? That people were given, like, the, uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake? They were actually saying that, oh, the voice actress for Ada Wong it was fucking awful. They were actually tweeting it to her. You are the reason why I can't play this game anymore. Oh, I was like really? She had to lock her comments. It's a goddamn game. That's not nice. It is regular. Let me write you a little haiku about it. A haiku, Japanese poem. It'll explain all you need to know about that chef. Convicted before a wicked man or woman, repeat offender, Victor Kudo. <laughs> If he takes anything again, you let me know. Yeah, but there's... There's Star Trek Pinks all over again. That dude... Oh, what's his name? You just showed me something. Ahmed Best. Ahmed Best. I felt so bad for him. I didn't... I didn't like the character Jar Jar Binks, but I would never write somebody death threats over shit. That's just stupid. It's, this, is, this is a lot. No, it's The Last of Us... Part two all over again because they sent death threats to the voice actor, the one girl too. Ellie? No, the the girl in part two. Because she ends up killing the one guy. Oh, I I don't know anyway, much about it. I'm not gonna play it. I don't understand. There's no reason to write death threats to anybody. Thank you, face model for him. Oh, I thought you did the voice too. Didn't, uh... Go ahead. Didn't, yeah. um... Oh... What? What's his name now? I'm at best? No. Oh, the kid for... No. Oh. So the kid for Phantom Menace, Jake oh, Roy, yeah. he, he got death threats, too. No. Yeah. Is it Elliot Page now? Elliot, right? Yeah, it's Elliot Page, yeah. Didn't she... Didn't they get really, like, upset about Ellie? Because Ellie looked a lot like Elliot when he was Ellen. 
Like, I remember that was a thing, like, Ellie I don't know from if it was so Last much of that. Us looked a lot like Ellen, and Ellen also was going to be doing she a did different her own game. game, yeah. Which was... But was Ellie it? looked so much like her. Was that Tale of Two Souls? Yeah, Two Souls. Something like that? Beyond Two Souls. Beyond Two Souls, thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I, remember, I thought she got really upset about like is how much Ellie looked like her or him now. There's a lot of, but the whole thing with death threats in general. Yeah, just that's stupid. just it's too it's a lot. Like that's just too much. Get out of your basement. Yeah. Please have a life. It's not too expensive. I'll buy you a replacement. Poor guy, he couldn't do enough for Mia. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. We got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called me for something like this. <laughs> 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 She's had enough for today. Yeah. Yep. Right. Alright, so we moved to Trabian. This is where I gotta... I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah, plus no one came to the restaurant. Ooh la la, Mademoiselle Maya! None! Oh! How can you leave me like this? Seriously. I'm sorry? That reminds me. Mr. Armstrong had a psych locker. Three, didn't he? You're gonna have to break those. Mr. Armstrong, I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Volunteers, of course! Uh, <clears throat> oh, shoot. I should have saved. What's happening? I do not like this horrible feeling! I can't say, damn it. Is that gonna be bad? No. Oh, well, if it doesn't unlock, it doesn't unlock. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Hello, hello. I will confess everything. Just don't hurt me. Yes. I do have... Well, I didn't download it, but I have it on my library. Supposedly, it's actually not bad. Huh? Well, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. It was a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket? The man who died here had a lottery ticket. For half a million dollars. Damn. Half a million? We. Oui. But after the incident, this ticket... It disappeared! <laughs> Ticket disappeared. This was the motive that the le per that the persecution gave from Maggie. They said that she poisoned the man to get the half a million dollar lottery ticket. Why didn't you tell me about the sooner? My lord. You've been trying you've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me. Now I want to know the reason why. No, monsieur. You doubt me? I've confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong, the half a million dollar ticket, lottery ticket, I think I know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. Okay, are you sure about this? Well, how about it? C'est va? Excuse me? It means, how are you? Oh, well, I'm fine, thanks. Bien, I'm happy to hear it. Doesn't sound like I'm doing so fine with the Cyclops, though. Poor Maggie, she was tempted by that evil, no? No, if it was really Maggie, then you'd have no reason to hide the facts from me. Mr. Armstrong, a half a million dollar lottery ticket, I think I know who took it. Stolen by this person. You? Take that. 
Mr. Armstrong, I think there's a very high probability that it was you. Ah! Wow, that is one piercing scream even for a man like him. My pourquoi moi? Why, you have no evidence. I'm not mask de mask. I'm not the kind of person who steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. I present to you the proof that you have stolen from others in the past. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. Damn it, I'm gonna screw this up. Ah, damn it! Didn't mean to hit present. Ugh, oh, this is gonna be messy. This might not work. Shit. It's one, two. Two each time, huh? If I want the achievement, that's all. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you just present whatever. Gotcha. Yeah, don't do that, then. Okay, so... Victor's note. What is this, a poem? Oh, monsieur, you know me so well. I adore poems. Please read it, then put some feeling into it. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman, repeat defender. I'm sorry to have to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong, but you've been arrested for stealing from your customers before, haven't you? Mon dieu! Le, me, le message! You are the liar! You deny it? You do not make la false accusation, s'il vous plaît. So, do you have any proof? I want to see the incontestable proof that I've ever stolen from one of my customers. Ooh la la. <laughs> yeah, imbecile, imbecile, you are an imbecile. What are you singing? Just one of my favorite chansons. It's called Imbecile. It is French. Come, monsieur, sing together with me. Imbecile, imbecile, you are an imbecile. Armstrong's definitely stolen from his customer before. I just need to find the right evidence to prove it. Oh, yeah. He stole the Magatama from me. Seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. W what is that? This is my Magatama. And I found it in your kitchen. None! Well, that scream just about broke some windows. We, oui, we. Oui. I have a weakness for the trinkets and the figurines. Uh, my hand, it just slips out. I cannot stop it. Stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from your customers, right? We, oui, it is la truth. I am just a timid little girl inside, monsieur. A timid little girl. Besides, this time, it was not a small trinket. We, oui? it was $500,000. My non, why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. Really now? Oh, monsieur, what is it? Isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? And that you're in desperate need of a large amount of cash? Oh, if I screw this one up... Uh, I can't do it. I'm going to skip it then. Okay. If I get him to say a bunch of French words, I get an achievement. It's Jean's, Jean Armstrong's foreign language course. Oh. But I don't have enough. If I screw this one up, it's over. So. Oh. You just gotta go through it. This restaurant is deep in the red, isn't it? Ah! You have a you have a loan to the tune of half a million dollars. That lottery ticket would have wiped out your debts. Mm. Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Ah! Mr. Armstrong, he said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How'd you know that he had something like that in the first place? The man, he was listening to the radio with his earpiece. Maggie said something about that too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, it exploded. Yes, half a million dollars, he shouted. And the ticket? We. Oui. He had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I, I was so desperately in need of money, so I... But the poison is coffee? 
No, 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 oh, no, no, you naughty man. I simply help myself to one of these tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, pourquoi pas? Eh, you had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was a winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, this is not true. I did not take it. The ticket for half a million, I mean. But you, you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. <coughs> my non ma fille. It was not. That's enough. Huh? Ah! Mr. Goda. What the heck are you doing here? Ugh. This is without a doubt the worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. Came in here for coffee. Does this craving for coffee know no bounds? Nope. Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole some one of the take, victims taken on the day in question. I am the... I am the airhead. No? Oh, airhead. Just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket. The winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see, I'm just a pretty faith. Without, without my looks, I have nothing. So, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal? Indeed, what did happen to it? <coughs> I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? <coughs> yes. Ugh. Voila, you too! Time to laugh at the pretty little airhead! Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Looks like we've got a new mystery now. Namely, where did the winning ticket go? I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway. Can't let Maggie Saf suffer any longer for this, and certainly not again. Stop it for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I think we have time to get into another one. Yeah, I think we're going to stop. Ah, okay. Alrighty. Well, we are going to call it for tonight. We will continue this next Sunday. Yes. I suppose. Yep. Ooh la la, zut da lo, sacre bleu. We'll just see if we keep doing the streams on Tuesdays too, because I may have to go back to go back to working Tuesdays. Fans enough. <laughs> Fans enough. We're gonna be streaming on Tuesday too. We'll play some more of it takes two, but we'll figure out another. We gotta figure out. Too. We gotta figure out a time to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We we went to doing four. Tens, and now I'm going to be going back to doing, you know, eight-hour days, and I don't know. Oof. Yeah, fuck We're it just trying it. to find a balance because we're short-staffed because there's only three of us, and there's supposed to be four of us. Yeah. And we haven't had any applicants, so we're just trying to find a, a balance to see what would work better so we're not there, ten, like, 11-hour, 12-hour days. I went to work. I went to work in five days again too myself. But then again, I get off at like noon unless somebody doesn't show up. Then I gotta go run around. It's very weird. So I think we're gonna we'll do it for the month of April, and to kind of write our hours down and take it from there, and then we'll see if I if we if I'm still gonna end up having Tuesdays off or not, or if we're gonna go back to Monday through Friday. Working my every third Saturday. I can't remember. Oh yeah, I was gonna say after we're done with the Phoenix Wright games, I think I'm gonna start the Tex Murphy games. Yes. So those should be fun. I'm gonna skip the very first one and go to the actual adventure game, the second one. I think the third or fourth one actually covers the first one. But yeah. What are we going to do after it takes two? Oh, I've got plenty of stuff for that. I've got the TikTok game. 
the uh, Tiktok A Tale for Two. And then we've also got that other one, which I think it was Riddy. They've got the, the two-player version of the uh, uh, the Rusty Lake games. Oh. Didn't I show you that? No. Oh, hold on. Well, here, let me do this real quick. Uh, yeah. Rusty Lake games are very strange. So, go to the title screen. I don't remember if I bought it or not yet. I didn't know they had a... Yeah, it's the one I told you about. I don't know. I, I like the rest of the games, but like, I just, they're weird. Okay, so what do you see? Because I have some kind of device that looks like a computer. Okay, so I'm in a room with some old furniture. Uh, let me see, I've got Oh well, yeah, I enjoyed them. I had a lot of fun with them. Oh, a house, a butterfly, and a family portrait. What do you see at the bottom left corner? That's a crow. One person's in the future, one person's in the past. Gotcha. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so I've opened a cap. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> you alright? F6 and the white one is on A6. Okay, can you move black to A1? Yes. Oh, the white one's moving now. Can you move your white one? Sorry. On E2. You know, this is going well. Can you move black to A4? White on E6? Oh. Well, it's got the same creepiness to it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think gonna... I vaguely remember you showing me this. Yeah. There's that, there's also the TikTok a game for two, and then we got a bunch of other two-player games, too. We never actually fit. We were playing... I've also got the... Oh, yeah. It's uh, a what is it? There was a one game we were playing that we were playing at, like, we played on New Year's Eve the last couple of years. Oh, oh, that's, uh... It's a little, we're, we're little pig guys. Oh. Love is dead. Oh, love is dead, yeah. We still haven't finished that. We finished World 3, and it's just getting more and more difficult. Yeah. Lovers in the dangerous space time. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're flying through space in a spaceship, and you're all running to do different things, whether to defend the ship or... Oh. Hell, there's a one game that I tried playing with my friends, which was, uh... Er... Was, we need to go deeper. Try to run a, a submarine. Oh! And you have to run around the ship and take care of things, and then, like, squids and stuff attacks, so you have to... Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's bizarre. I did it when I was drunk with the guys. Uh, that was fun. But yeah, there's plenty of stuff we could do. Yeah. But anyways, we are going to stop it for tonight. So you all have a good night. And we'll hopefully see you Tuesday. Yes. Once we figure out a time, we'll let, we'll let yeah. you guys know. A little bit better idea. But yeah. So I have to go to the dentist again.
You all have a good night. Have a good night, guys. Bye.